here's where stuff gets weird, and I told you there's always more to the story when I'm talking about this stuff. So here's where it is, all right? So we're actually going to use reinforcement schedules to decrease behavior. This is odd because, like we said, the definition of reinforcement is to maintain or increase a particular behavior, right? So what we're going to do now is we're going to use reinforcement to actually slow a behavior down. So we're going to be talking about reinforcing different rates of behavior. So that's the key here. So we can use reinforcement to decrease rates. Reinforcement schedules will maintain behavior at a particular rate. So you can change that schedule and you get a clear effect on behavior. You're still reinforcing. You're not punishing a person or anything like that. It's just that you're saying that um, what used to take, maybe I used to require 15 responses per week or something like that. Now I'm requiring four responses per week. And anything more than that four is going to be ignored. And anything, and anything less than that four is going to be ignored. But I'm going to reduce that behavior from 15 down to down to four. Right? Again, it's not punishment. You are not trying to reduce a behavior, so to speak. You're not, it's not that contingency sort of thing to reduce that. It's talking about changing the rate of a behavior. You still want the behavior to occur. You're just maintaining it at a different rate. You're not trying to get it down to zero. Okay? So let's look at one of these differential reinforcement of low rates of behavior. So DRL, differential reinforcement of low rates of behavior. So the question to you guys, what, what do we mean by differential? Right? So think about that for a second before you, go, you know, pause and you know, pause the video and, and think about that for a minute. Um, but what we're really getting at here okay, is that we're going to respond differently. We're going to reinforce differently. Okay? So differential meaning we're waiting for something particular to happen before we reinforce. And that's all we really mean by differential here. Right? So differential... Um, a, D, a DRL uh, will we can focus on a limited responding situation. So we're going to say a given number of responses is allowed over a time period. Right? So for example, some people like to participate in class. Right? So some people participate in class at higher rates than other people do. So you can actually you get maybe you've got somebody that participates too much. So you can put them on a differential reinforcement schedule. So it, uh, a DRL, a low rate or limited responding situation, so where you can say okay only two or three comments a day are going to be reinforced. I'm not going to reinforce you if you do any more than two comments. Right? So that's your DRL. You're lowering that rate. Right? We can also talk about spaced responding. So you've got that limited responding. We can also pace somebody with this. Responding does not occur for a given amount of time and after that period has passed the first response will be reinforced. So again what we're thinking about here is that if you make a particular response, I'm not going to let you say anything again. I'm not going to reinforce you. I'm not going to call on you or whatever until uh, you know 20 minutes has passed. I'm going to slow down that rate of responding. Okay? Uh, a lot of kids get you know really excited and they start going really fast and asking lots of questions and doing all these things. You can start to slow that down using a DRL spaced responding procedure. Right? But again, it's differential reinforcement. So well, what are you using as the reinforcer? Well, that's up to you. you you've got to figure out what's reinforcing behavior um, and what tools you can use. Like I said earlier, the pre-math principle is a good one that you can focus on here. But the idea w with this is that it's a, it's a, it's kind of a special type of schedule, right? So you're scheduling reinforcers after a certain number of behaviors. Okay. This one's a bit odd. DR0, DRO. Um, there's some argument in the field as to what this really is. Is, is there such thing as a DR0? And uh, yeah, I don't know, okay? Um, because this, this starts to violate that rule of contingency when we're thinking about reinforcement. So supposedly, reinforcement, the definition of it that, we've, that we're using is a contingent application of a stimulus following a behavior, right? Okay? Application or removal following a behavior. That requires that you do something. But a DR0 says, we're going to reinforce you if the response does not happen during a given time. So I like to think of this as a, a, re, a re, reinforcing um, abstaining behavior. Right? So if you abstain from a response for X amount of time, um, then I will reinforce you for that. Right? It's a very applicable sort of thing. You can do this really, really, really well, and it works really well with fading and all these other things. Right? Um, but again, if the unwanted behavior happens during the inter... Or, you know, again, we're looking for... A behavior not to occur, which is a bit odd. It kind of logically goes backwards here. Okay? If the behavior does happen during the particular interval, that DR0 interval that you're after, then you actually reset the interval. Again, there's the logical problem that we, are t we talked about. All right? um, so what again, instead of thinking of this as DR0, you can also think of it as DRO instead of DR0, because really what you're doing is you're just reinforcing any other response, okay? in a sense. 
So you're reinforcing other responses other than uh, something other than the one that you don't want. So you're just making sure that one particular thing doesn't happen. Yeah. It's a bit of an odd thing. And I just mentioned about fading, and here's why. You want to go ahead and start with a very simple success thing here. So the idea is make it easy for them. Right? So if you've got a kid that's talking out of turn, basically tell them that, okay, we're going to, uh, you need to be remain silent uh, for the next two minutes and then get earn a reinforcer. And then the next time out, it's four minutes, and then it's eight minutes, and so on and so forth. And you can fade that procedure up um, to an entire classroom setting. So you're going to change that duration, but you start small uh, to give those early successes and you can start getting reinforcers. And uh, then once you get reinforcers, behavior starts to maintain and you can put additional differential requirements on that. Okay. This one's useful, differential reinforcement of incompatible responding, so DRI. Right? Um, <laughs> so response must, uh, the response being reinforced must prevent the undesirable response from occurring. So think about what is um, incompatible with smoking a cigarette. Right? So if we're wanting to set somebody up on a DRI schedule, what's incompatible with smoking this cigarette? Uh, let's see, is walking incompatible with smoking? No, probably not. Is talking incompatible? No, probably not. Um, is studying in a library probably or incompatible? Eh, probably. Most libraries you can't smoke in them, so maybe that one works. Right? Um, so you're going to reinforce other behaviors, behaviors that are not the smoking, but they have to be incompatible with it. I think the example I've got up here is swimming. All right. Um, so if you want to maybe reduce somebody's cigarette smoking, encourage them to swim more, right? Because then they're not going to be able to swim, or they're not going to be able to smoke while they're swimming. So it's an incompatible response. In the classroom, you know, I, my teacher used to do this one all the time with me. Was you know, either I had to sit on my hands because my hands were always you know, messing with my neighbors and flicking my pens and doing all weird stuff. So I either had to sit on my hands, which is incompatible with me punching my neighbor. Um, or do something else like that that was incompatible. So the other thing that she would have me do, I'm thinking back one one of my teachers here, um, was the four on the floor thing. You know, I'd be leaning back in your chair and all that stuff. So and then I'd always fall over and disrupt the class. And, and so the idea was four on the floor, with all four feet of the chair on the floor. There's no way for you to be leaning back in the chair. So it's incompatible. Sitting and standing, smoking and swimming, all sorts of good examples there. So differential reinforcement of incompatible behavior. When you got a behavior happening either in yourself or with a kiddo that you do not want, find a behavior to replace it with. Okay, so find a behavior that you know, and that's what we're trying to do is we're going to reinforce another behavior. So smoking is automatically reinforced by the nicotine. So we're going to try and reinforce something else here. Um, and reinforce it at a rate that will eventually replace that smoke. It's a challenge. You know, it, it, this is pretty cool stuff for the classroom. Um, a little harder to use DRI outside of the classroom at, a lot of times, but um, it's definitely a useful procedure. Differential re re uh, reinforcement of alternative behavior, right? So, or alternative responding. So, we're going to reinforce anything other than something. Right? So it's similar to DRI, um, but the response doesn't have to be incompatible. It just has to be different. Right? <laughs> so as you saw in the background, I'm going to reinforce you for drinking the water rather than for drinking the beer. Um, they're not completely incompatible. You kind of do both at the same time, but uh, you know, you have two glasses supposedly. Uh, but the idea is we're going to reinforce the uh, something else, something other than the inappropriate response, or something an alternative to those inappropriate responses. So DRA, DRI are some of the most useful procedures you're going to run into in behavior analysis. They're unbelievably, uh, they're used at an unbelievable frequency because they're very effective. Um, we, we use them in combination with other uh, with other procedures such as extinction and punishment and timeouts and all that stuff. And we'll, we'll talk about how to kind of integrate all these, but the basics here are just that you're going to reinforce something else, you're going to reinforce something com and incompatible, or you're going to reinforce abstaining, right? So those are kind of those three approaches that we're going to take. Um, and then we're going to apply those at, at further level as we start to add other, um, what do you call it, other techniques. So, all right, see you soon.